and uh, SpaceX uh, from Freedom. Thank you for an incredible ride up to orbit and an incredible ride home. After 170 days in space, four astronauts splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean on Friday bringing an end to a successful NASA SpaceX mission to the ISS. Following two days of weather delays, SpaceX's crew Dragon Freedom returned to Earth off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida, beneath clear blue skies and into mild seas. The spacecraft's descent through Earth's atmosphere appeared to be nominal, with two drogue parachutes deploying on schedule, followed by four clean main parachutes allowing Dragon to splash down at about 25 kilometers per hour. This splashdown put an end to Crew-4, the fourth operational mission flown by SpaceX for NASA. Earlier this month, the Crew-5 mission launched four astronauts to the space station, where they will remain for about six months, including an initial demonstration mission in 2020 and two private space flights, which include Inspiration-4 and Axiom-1, Crew Dragon has now carried 30 people into orbit. Obviously, SpaceX has flown more astronauts than anyone since Crew Dragon's debut. In a little more than two years, SpaceX has surpassed the total number of astronauts launched into orbit by China, which is 17, whose human spaceflight program dates back to 2003, and in the time Crew Dragon has been operational, it has exceeded even the Russian Soyuz vehicle in terms of the total number of people flown into space during that period, which is up until now 18 cosmonauts. Over the last two years, Dragon had a few flaws, including an intermittently pro problematic toilet and a lagging parachute on one flight, but NASA officials have been extremely pleased with the vehicle's performance. It has safely returned the United States capability of human spaceflight, which had been lost since the space shuttle's retirement. Had Dragon not been available, NASA would have been in the uncomfortable position of relying on Russia for crew transport amid the Ukraine war. Crew-5 was the last launch of 2022 for SpaceX's Dragon vehicle, but two missions are expected during the first quarter of 2023. In February, the launch of Crew-6 was planned to be commanded by NASA astronaut Steve Bowen alongside pilot Warren Hoberg. In addition, there will be two mission specialists, Russian cosmonaut Andrei Fadyev, and United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan al Nayadi. Then, as early as March, entrepreneur Jared Isaacman will fly his second Dragon Free Flyer mission, Polaris Dawn, with the goal of performing the world's first private EVA, or extravehicular activity, as well as the first private spacewalk in history. Needless to say, we're all looking forward to 2023. SpaceX itself has also been bidding against itself for NASA's science missions for a while. This lack of competition harkens back to the period from 2005 to 2015, when NASA was largely reliant on United Launch Alliance and its Delta and Atlas rockets, for getting its science missions into space. SpaceX broke this monopoly when it launched the Jason 3 mission for NASA and NOAA, otherwise known as the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, all the way back in January of 2016. But now, SpaceX has fallen into the same monopoly position as ULA before, simply because there are no other bidders for NASA's medium and large science missions beyond SpaceX and its fleet of Falcon rockets. When NASA's science programs, or NOAA, have a spacecraft they want to launch, they go to NASA's Launch Services program, which is charged with providing safe, reliable, cost-effective, and on-schedule launch services. Effectively, the Launch Services program acts as a broker, matching spacecraft with optimal rockets. The primary method NASA has for this is the NASA's Launch Services 2 contract which is basically a pool of NASA-approved rockets eligible to bid for science missions. In its brochure for the LSP, NASA advertises a fleet of launch vehicles available for science missions. But in all actuality, this is quite a bit misleading. Two of the rockets, the Pegasus XL and Minotaur C vehicles, are only suitable for small payloads and fly infrequently. 
Northrop Grumman's Pegasus rocket has flown just one science mission in the last five years for NASA, which is the 281 kilogram Icon spacecraft back in 2019. Northrop's Minotaur C rocket has failed on its last two NASA launches, one in 2009 and one in 2011, and almost certainly will never be selected again. The Antares rocket is unavailable for science missions because it relies on Russian engines. It will soon be retired. Another one that we have to mention is the medium lift Atlas V rocket, which Tori Bruno has confirmed is sold out. Aside from the SpaceX vehicles, that leaves two additional rockets, ULA's Vulcan and Blue Origin's New Glenn. Both of these are powerful heavy lift rockets capable of flying virtually all of NASA's science missions. Although NASA has issued press releases announcing the Vulcan and New Glenn having been on-ramped, these announcements were premature. The problem is that neither of them has had a flight. Next month, an Atlas V rocket will launch the Joint Polar Satellite System 2 into a sun-synchronous orbit for NOAA. This will be the final science mission launched by the rocket for NASA and NOAA. The Atlas V still has plenty of work to do before retirement later this decade, but its primary focus will be on launching Project Kuiper satellites for Amazon and the Starliner crew vehicle for Boeing. So after next month, all of NASA's major science missions for the next few years, including the Europa Clipper and Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, among many other missions, will be flying on Falcon 9 and heavy rockets. NASA also has some big science missions that will need rockets soon including a lander for its Mars Sample Return mission, which is launching in 2028, the Dragonfly mission to Titan in 2027, and the NEO or NEO surveyor to look for killer asteroids in 2026. The agency has not said whether it will wait to award these missions until such time as competition is available. Competition from SpaceX has been good for NASA, during the last decade, as SpaceX developed its Falcon 9 rocket and became eligible to compete in NASA's Launch Services 2 contract, there has been a downward trend in launch costs for NASA's science missions. Of course, it would be greater when Starship officially goes into operation. Once SpaceX's flagship rocket proves its unique abilities during its upcoming orbital flight, Starship's unexpectedly low launch cost will grant us all the potential to really change the game for space travel. And that's it for today's episode. If you want more content like this, I suggest you become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below so we can keep pumping out great content. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.